In this podcast episode, Ben Shapiro dives into a variety of topics, starting with the upcoming election and the media's attempts to influence public discourse. He emphasizes the significance of the upcoming election, labeling it as potentially the biggest of our lifetime. Shapiro then transitions to discussing the media's role in shaping narratives around election misinformation. He recounts receiving an email from the New York Times, which he interprets as an attempt to pressure YouTube into censoring conservative content. The email accused him of spreading election misinformation, particularly regarding his comments about Democrats and ballot harvesting. Shapiro argues that this is part of a broader coordinated effort by mainstream media to silence conservative voices, which he refers to as a democratic media human centipede. He expresses frustration at the notion that his comments, which he believes are factual, could be labeled as misinformation simply because they challenge the prevailing narrative. The conversation shifts to another email he received from the Washington Post, which he claims is part of the same coordinated attack. The email sought his comments for a story examining the role of podcasts in casting doubt on the integrity of the upcoming election. Shapiro argues that the media's focus on him and other conservative figures is not about misinformation, but rather an attempt to delegitimize their platforms. He points out that the Washington Post's analysis included his comments about ballot harvesting, which he insists are based on factual reporting. This leads him to question the integrity of the media and its motivations, suggesting that they are more interested in maintaining control over the narrative than in truth. Shapiro then discusses the implications of the media's actions on free speech and the dissemination of information. He argues that the media's attempts to censor conservative voices are a direct threat to democracy. He highlights the irony of the Washington Post's claim that democracy dies in darkness while simultaneously advocating for the silencing of opposing viewpoints. Shapiro believes that this trend is dangerous for the country as it undermines the foundational principles of free speech and open discourse. He emphasizes the need for individuals to be vigilant and to support platforms that allow for diverse opinions. As the podcast progresses, Shapiro addresses the current state of the election race. He acknowledges that while many are predicting a Trump victory, the reality is that no one can be certain of the outcome. He urges listeners to participate in the electoral process, emphasizing the importance of voting, especially in swing states. Shapiro notes that early voting trends show a significant increase in Republican registrations, which he interprets as a positive sign for Trump's campaign. However, he cautions against complacency, reminding listeners that every vote counts and that turnout will be crucial in determining the election's outcome. Shapiro also touches on the role of early voting in shaping election results. He references data from various states, noting that while Republicans are performing well in early voting, it is difficult to predict how this will translate to overall election results. He cites Nate Silver's analysis, which suggests that early voting numbers can be misleading and do not always correlate with final outcomes. Shapiro stresses the importance of getting out to vote, regardless of early voting trends, as the election could hinge on turnout. The discussion then shifts to the media's portrayal of the election and its candidates. Shapiro critiques the mainstream media's narrative surrounding Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, arguing that they are attempting to present Harris as a viable candidate despite her lack of authenticity and connection with voters. He contrasts this with Trump's approach, which he believes resonates more with the average American. Shapiro points out that Trump's ability to connect with people is a significant advantage as he genuinely enjoys engaging with his supporters. Shapiro also addresses the recent comments made by Biden in which he referred to Trump supporters as garbage. He discusses the potential fallout from these remarks, suggesting that they could alienate moderate voters and energize Trump's base. Shapiro argues that such divisive rhetoric is counterproductive and reflects a broader trend within the Democratic Party to demonize their opponents. He emphasizes that this kind of language can have real consequences for voter turnout and the overall political landscape. The podcast features a segment 
where Shapiro discusses the absurdity of the media's focus on Trump's past comments and actions while ignoring the more significant issues at hand. He argues that the media's obsession with labeling Trump as a threat to democracy distracts from the actual policies and actions that impact Americans' lives. Shapiro believes that this focus on personality over policy is detrimental to informed political discourse and ultimately harms the electorate. As the conversation continues, Shapiro highlights the importance of grassroots movements and local activism in shaping the political landscape. He encourages listeners to engage with their communities and advocate for conservative values at the local level. Shapiro believes that building a strong foundation of support within communities is essential for the long-term success of conservative candidates and policies. He emphasizes that change often starts at the grassroots level and that individuals have the power to make a difference. In the latter part of the podcast, Shapiro interviews Governor Ron DeSantis, discussing key issues facing Florida and the nation. DeSantis outlines the implications of two significant amendments on the ballot in Florida, particularly regarding abortion rights. He explains how these amendments could fundamentally alter the state's approach to abortion and the potential consequences for taxpayers. DeSantis emphasizes the need for voters to be informed about the implications of these amendments, arguing that they represent a radical shift in policy.